announced RTX 30 series GPUs for laptops back at the beginning of the year, offering some extremely interesting performance and a whole host of third gen Max Q features that now benefit every 30 series laptop rather than just low power models. The change did spark a bit of confusion at first though, as this time it's been left more to the OEMs to decide how much power and performance you'll get on a per model basis, rather than a specific GPU offering the same performance across all models. Asus have been one of the first to provide us with the maximum graphics power for all of its new range, so today we're going to take a quick look at what they have on offer across the range, as well as see how much of a difference there is in performance between two laptops with very different max graphics powers. First up, let's take a look at the new range and what features are available. Asus launched with no fewer than 20 models across the range, with more models likely to follow in the coming months. These are available in one of the four different sub-brands. These are Tough, ROG Strix, ROG Flow and ROG Zephyrus. We aren't going to break down every single model and its full specs, as this would make this video really long. And you can see the individual features and specs really easily on our website. However, we will take a quick look at the general features that you'll see that are relevant for each of the sub-brands beyond just the basic core components, starting with Asus Tough models. These all feature a 1080p display offering 144Hz refresh rate, an RGB keyboard, stereo speakers, Wi-Fi 6 and a multitude of connectivity, including USB-C with display connectivity. Being tough branded, they're also tested to be extremely durable against drop, vibration, humidity and extreme temperatures to ensure reliability. You can currently buy the Tough with either an RTX 3060 or an RTX 3070 GPU with max graphics power of between 85 and 95 watts. Next up is historically the most popular of Asus models and also the most powerful for gaming. It's the ROG Strix. There are two models available here with the G15 and G17 or the SCAR15 and 17. Here the number refers to the screen size of that model. Strix models offer ROG features like advanced cooling and RGB lighting, including per-key illumination control. There's also Wi-Fi 6, a larger trackpad, higher quality speakers and screens, ranging from 1080p 144Hz right up to a whopping 360Hz, 1440p with 165Hz and even 4K with 120Hz. ROG Strix laptops also offer the most powerful GPU option with a max graphics power of 130 watts across the range. ROG Flow offers something completely different to the rest of the range. It's ultra small and light and features a 13-inch 120Hz display that can be configured multiple ways. It comes with the ultra-powerful Ryzen 9 5900HS 8-core CPU and a GeForce GTX 1650 GPU built-in, which is enough for gaming on the go but it also comes with an external GPU featuring an RTX 3080. So when you have access to more power, you can crank up the graphics. Interestingly, the 3080 in the eGPU also has a max graphics power of 150 watts, which is the highest currently available in the Asus range. Last but by no means least, it's the ROG Zephyrus, available as either the Zephyrus 14 or 15, or the mighty dual-screen Zephyrus Duo 15. Starting with the G14 and 15 models, these all feature backlit keys and Dolby Atmos sound with at least four speakers, including force cancelling subwoofers. They also have fingerprint recognition, 100% sRGB colour accurate screens with high refresh rates, USB-C and fast charging. GPU max graphics power varies for each model from 80 watt up to 100 watt, as they aren't all out gaming machines like the Strix model. Then there's the Zephyrus Duo. This mixes together gaming and productivity in an ultimate powerhouse of a laptop. It features not one, but two screens with calibrated 100% Adobe RGB accuracy. There's RGB lighting with per-key illumination and a trackpad that also doubles up as a number pad. The CPU and GPU benefit from an advanced cooling solution and the GPU offers a full 130 watt Mac graphics power. Basically, if you want everything, this is the one to go for. Currently, it's only offered as an RTX 3070 model with 300Hz 1080p screen or as an RTX 3080 model with a 4K 120Hz screen. So we've taken a look at some of the specs and features available and we're sure that you noticed that we mentioned maximum graphics power quite a lot. 
With NVIDIA Max Q third gen technologies, there can be multiple power limits available that can then be shared by the CPU and GPU to offer the best performance per task. This is part of NVIDIA Dynamic Boost 2.0 and essentially allows the ability to save power when it's not required or to move it to the place where it'll have the most benefit for any given task. However, there is a maximum amount of power that can be sent to the GPU and this will have an effect on how fast it can be. This will then vary depending on the laptop's intended use case. So ultra slim and light laptops will have a lower maximum graphics power than say a dedicated gaming model where there's more space for cooling, for example. We've covered the technology in more detail in our most recent laptop buyer's guide. So you can learn more by checking that out and we'll pop a link in the description for you. But what sort of a difference does lowering the maximum graphics power make, I hear you say? Well, here we have two models from Asus, which are the first ones we've been able to try out. The G15 and the Zephyrus Duo. The G15 features the AMD 5900HS CPU, which is a 35 watt part, and the RTX 3080 with a max graphics power of 100 watts. Whilst the Zephyrus Duo features the 5900HX CPU, which is 45 watt plus with overclocking, and an RTX 3080 with a max graphics power of 130 watts, the highest currently offered built into an Asus laptop. As a simple test, we're going to run a 3D Mark benchmark, which will test both the CPU and the GPU independently. It'll then also give us an overall score too. You can then compare this to either your home PC or your existing laptop to get an idea of just how powerful they are but they will also show us what the difference between these different power options means. Naturally, we expect the Zephyrus Duo to be the winner here, but we are interested to see just how much of a difference all that extra power makes. And here are our results. To keep it a fair test, we set both machines to 1080p resolution and both into the turbo preset mode within the armory crate so that we could max out the cooling on both. They also have the same version of 3D Mark freshly installed and the NVIDIA 461.40 version driver. As expected, our Zephyrus Duo came out on top with an overall score of 11,329 versus the G15 at 10,330, which is 9.67%. It's possible that with a bit of overclocking and tweaking that we could push the Zephyrus Duo a little bit further due to its beefier cooling and higher power allowance, but that's not something for this video. If you'd like to see us try that though, do let us know in the comments. For now though, we can see that there was a 5.3% increase in CPU performance and a 10.5% increase in GPU performance between these two laptops, which is roughly what we would have expected with the wattage differences of these components. So which laptop in the Asus RTX 30 series range is best for you? Well, if it's gaming on a budget, then we recommend the Tough series. For no compromises gaming, then it's got to be the Strix series, all featuring that 130 watt max graphics power and of course, all the RGB. If you want something that's not too in your face that you can use for gaming and maybe even creating or work, then that's the Zephyrus G series for you. And if you just want it all, then it's got to be the Zephyrus Duo. To shop the full range of 30 series laptops from Asus, visit scan.co.uk or for help and advice on which to opt for, get in touch with our helpful team. If you thought that this video was helpful and you'd like to see more, then be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for our latest content. And also don't forget to tell us your thoughts in the comments.